<laughs> Truth, I've seen it happen. So I, I I work with these with these amazing ladies quite a bit. Um, they're just incredible at the way that they handle their buyers, they handle their sellers, they handle everybody. Um, and I, I think they have a lot of really good insight that everybody can learn a bit from when it comes to working with your buyers and, and overcoming those objections that they might typically have. Um, they're just incredibly knowledgeable. So I'm really happy that they took the time to join us. Um, so if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, um, we'll go ahead and start with you, Kelly. Why don't you introduce okay. yourself too? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I can. Everybody knows me. Um, <laughs> so my name is Andrew Hicks. I'm the uh, Market Center Tech Trainer for uh, Clearwater, uh, Gulfside, and Tampa properties. Um, I've been here for just over two years now. I'm actually on vacation in sunny Colorado today. Um, but yeah, I uh, I work with a lot of agents, and, and I get to I get to learn a lot from every single one of them, and it's uh, it's wonderful. So that is uh, that is. Hey, warm, buddy. What's that? Stay warm. Thank you for coming on with your uh, vacation going on. I've been I've been trying to stay warm. It actually snowed, which was really rad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we'll go ahead and we'll start with uh, we'll start with Kelly. Okay. All right. So my name is Kelly Ackley. I'm out of the Palm Harbor Market Center. I've recently built a team with Dana. We actually started the last day of February. And uh, because of Dana, able to overcome so many buyer objections in this tough market, we were number six team our first month as a team. So she's got you know, we have these tricks, right? Buyers are getting nervous. Buyers see interest rates going up. Even before the interest rates went up, inventory is tight. And if it's an FHA or VA buyer, our buyers are really, really struggling, right? If we get, get up, when I put my listings on, we get multiple offers. We go through the cash and conventional first. It's what we do because those are the easy closes usually. But there are some ways to sweeten the deals for some buyers out there. Uh, Dana's been able to get some FHA buyers under contract and not overpay. Um, one of the big things that we are hitting right now as we speak with buyers is the interest rate. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And interest rate is going up and they are, and it's going to affect buying power. So for, I think it's every 1% increase in rate, it's going to cut their buying power by 10%. So if they're approved for $500,000, when the interest rate goes up 1%, they're now pre-approved for 450. So we need to make sure we're educating the buyers historic uh, interest rates are still historically low. People were buying at 12 to 13. Um, if you're in this area, people say countryside area was built on 15% all day long because as it was being developed, that was the interest rates people were paying them. So we kind of really just have to educate our buyers beforehand, let them know what they're pre-approved for, let them know what the interest rate can do to them, but encourage them that interest rates are probably not going down for a little bit and prices at the value that we are right now, prices are probably not going anywhere. This is kind of our new normal. So if anyone is hanging out, any of your buyers just waiting until prices drop or the bubble bursts or you know, they're going to be waiting a long time. We do know there's fluctuations in the market right now. Nothing is directly related to the real estate industry. We are strong. Financing is strong. Inflation is going up within the country. So it's going to affect things. But one of the things that Dana has started doing, and I'll let her tell you about it, is educating the buyers before we even take them out that first time to let them know they are going to to have some challenges. So Dana, what kind of things do you sit and talk with your buyers before? Yeah, that's you? definitely been an important part of it because without educating your buyers, you're then going out and sometimes setting them up to be disappointed a lot, especially in this market right now. If someone is, you know, especially if they're conventional FHA or VA, it's gonna be a little more difficult. So the first thing I try to do with everyone is just let them know what our market's like. It's, you know, low inventory, high, higher prices right now. It might take a little bit. And so just, you know, letting them know, like, we're going to get it done, but 
we need to be a little patient on it and not to get too discouraged because with, I feel like without educating them that part first, they'll get discouraged really quickly and it makes it difficult to keep pushing and going forward if they're discouraged immediately, you know? And so educating them of the process of how it's been going, how, what to expect is really the first thing I try to do before we even start viewing homes, just Mm -hmm. to kind of let them know what, what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really important. I think it's important to make sure that they are Mm pre-approved versus pre-qualified. I know that there are some different thoughts on that, but the difference of pre-qualification from a lender is you just giving them your social, they run your credit and they say, we think this is what we can loan you. In today's market, we really need that pre-approval for the buyers, which means the lender has looked at the documents, looked at their tax return, verified their income and debt to income ratio. Because as we go in and compete with other buyers, we need to be able to tell that listing agent that this buyer is ready to go. Relationships with other vendors, really, really important, right? We have inspectors, lenders, plumbers, insurance companies. We have all of this ahead of time, but we need the lender to really be on board. So if you are a newer agent, I would recommend getting and building a relationship with at least a couple lenders, because what they'll do for your clients is they're going to work harder when they know you and they care about you. It's just what they're going to do. Right now, they're able to put things into pre-underwriting. We have a lender who can close an FHA deal in three weeks. Um, there may be some a little quicker, but he's been able to go ahead and stick the file, pre-approve them, get them into pre-underwriting. And we let the listing agent know that we let them know when we present the offer. First, we call them, right? Dana calls every listing agent before we put in an offer and say, what are you looking for? Mm -hmm. What would sweeten the deal for the seller? But then knowing that we have this strong buyer on the end is, is kind of what helps our buyer. Um, yeah, that working closely with lenders has definitely helped our buyers out. Um, I mean, most recently, one of our buyers is an FHA loan. Um, we were able to let the listing agent know that we could close in three weeks, in 21 days. And a lot of the times when you see an FHA loan, the concern is the length of the closing. Uh-huh. And um, so we were able to let them know that. And that guy, we were able to get an offer accepted at list price. So he didn't have to, you know, go way over asking to get a home. And so I know a lot of people right now are concerned about that. Absolutely. Appraisal waivers and appraisal gaps are big in the market here. Uh, and, And not everybody can compete. So if you have a buyer who's an FHA approved, Maybe because they want a low down payment, maybe they don't have cash in hand, maybe their credit or debt to income ratio is a little off, and that's the only way they can get approved. So these appraisal waivers and gaps are what are winning offers, and so that's why we have to really educate our buyers and really sweeten the deal as much as we can, shorten the inspection period, shorten the close time. We up the escrow deposit, so escrow deposit comes right off of the down payment. We all know that. Um, Some buyers are afraid to put that much money on the line, but we because of the education that we've had with the buyers preliminarily, we've let them know that that's our job. That's what we do is protect that escrow deposit with the contingencies. So even if we're shortening it to a five day inspection period, you know, we call our inspector before we put the offer in, Hey, you know, our, our, one of the guys we use is Brett. Hey, Brett, can you get this inspection done in five days? We need it done report everything. Can you do that? So then we can sweeten that with the seller um, it's just something that's, that's helping. Um, yeah, and one thing but the appraisal, to, go ahead. Oh, sorry. One, one thing to, to jump in super quick. Um, we were going to go ahead and provide a little bit of information, just kind of an overview of some of these strategies and what's, uh, what's really focused on to help your buyers um, mm-hmm. along with that interest rate chart. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat for you all here. And we kind of jumped into it um, uh, pretty quickly, but this is kind of an open forum. So if you have any questions or if you have any input or, or personal stories where any of these strategies have helped you in the past, um, feel free to raise your hand and we can, we can all kind of talk about it. Um, Absolutely. Real and, world experience is really kind of what realtors are so good at sharing, right? Because exactly. we give and, and we don't hide secrets. We give to 
everyone because we want a better world of realtors out there for our buyers. We can't handle everyone. We want to protect our reputation. So we want educated realtors. So we share. Kelly, are you getting, um, are you, are you actually able to get some of these offers with these contingencies on there? Or are they Absolutely. Yes. Okay. We are still, yeah. Dana is getting, I mean, Dana, what have you had close in just the last few weeks? Um, I mean, February 29th. So <laughs> I've, well, I've had six, six closings since, but, um, like the types, cause we've gotten conventional cash FHA, all basically all of them under contract with some of them with contingency, some without. So we're getting, we're getting them all, all under contract, just in very different ways. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely important to, to educate the buyer on what they specifically are going to be working with and what can help them because each of them are going to be in a different situation. Yeah. And, and one, one other thing too, Dana doesn't like to brag a whole lot, but <laughs> the information that she's giving you and, and that Kelly's giving you, cause they both work so closely together. Um, is super, super valuable. Dana, um, got a, uh, got her buyers first offer she submitted for them ever, um, <laughs> Stepped in and, and, and it went through and she, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's that up. was, that was an exciting one for sure. Because again, I educated her right away. Like this is, this is what's going on. She just started searching, you know, I just, I didn't want her to get too excited about the first one. Um, we had only seen two homes and the second one she viewed was like, this is it. And when she told me that I was like, okay, so if this is it, we're going to have to come in strong. We're going to have to, um, you know, do what we can do to get you this home, this home. And so one of the things I helped educate her on was, was an appraisal gap um, because it might not appraise, it might, but just letting them know that if they do have the ability to put in their contract that they can pay really any sort of appraisal gap will help. Um, but she, she was like, yes, I definitely, I have the cash to be able to do that. I love this house. Let's put it in the contract. And I, I, that definitely did it. We, we were able to get it accepted and that was her first one. And she was like, I thought you told me this was going to take, you know, a long time. I'm like, trust me, this is not usually how it's going, <laughs> but I'm super happy that it did for you. Yes, 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 absolutely. And then I'll talk really quick about some programs. There are a lot of programs out there for buyers right now, education for myself. And I know Dana, it's something that we're trying to catch up on because of these programs. American Home Partners has been around for a while. American Home Partners used to look a little bit more like a rent to own program. Although the buyer really doesn't get any amazing financial benefits after the closing, they do get the first option, first right of refusal on that house. American Home Partners will qualify your buyer when you go, the, the house has to be qualified as well. So there needs to be a little preliminary work on some neighborhoods because certain neighborhoods are approved and certain aren't. They will submit a cash offer for your buyer. So now your buyer looks like they're coming in as a cash buyer. They purchase the house, they live in it, and they get the option to purchase it within three to five years. Um, knock is another program right now. I've checked into that. They're kind of a regular lender, except for the home swap program. So if you have a buyer who says, okay, I want to buy this house, but I have to sell mine first. Those contingencies are no longer working. We can't write those in. Sellers are not going to wait for someone else to sell their house. This home swap program is going to allow, as long as they have up to 25%, they need at least 25% equity in their current home that they're living in. Knock will allow them to use 65% of that equity for other mortgage payments, for repairs, for closing costs, whatever's needed, so that they can buy a new home without having to sell their old one. They move into the new one, they only pay the new mortgage, and now the house is listed for sale and sold within six months. And that they're only paying one mortgage. So that's really amazing. Natalie, you just go into Knock, um, you go into their website, and they will give you, I think it's a, 
11 or 14 minute education video. They will certify you. And I just did that last week. The home swap program is super valuable. We have a client right now who wants to downsize. She's going to have to sell her house to get the money. Knock will allow her to do it. And there's fees in there, but the fees are pretty darn low. Um, they do preliminary work on the house and make sure it can sell. Ribbon is something like that as well, which is what we're checking into that gives them cash buying power. So, so, you know, buyers are in a little bit of a difficult situation right now, but there's more resources than ever, I think, to help them get the house they want, as long as they're prepared ahead of time for what's coming. Well, and I think also that goes back into the having a strong relationship with lenders as well um, and getting to know because different mortgage companies have different programs that could help your buyer. And so getting to know a few different ones and knowing what they can do um, is definitely a good tool to have. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, real quick, we'll, we'll pause real quick. I think Bryant had a question. What strategies are you guys using for VA buyers? Hmm. <laughs> So, well, recently our VA buyer, we switched to FHA. Um, unfortunately, we are still really struggling with VA because the appraisals are so tight. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really but the tough part. I was going to say also on top of that, VA has gotten even more strict on like roof age. So mm -hmm. a lot of our homes, at least in our area, um, Clearwater, is a lot of the homes have older roofs. So mm -hmm. when you see a house that's got a 15 year old roof, but everything else is new and everything else is perfect. It's just, it's just not really going to work unless they're willing to replace the roof, which right now sellers aren't really willing to do much of anything. Right. They really don't need to. Yeah, and has anybody, anybody that's on here, have you, um, what's a common objection you've heard from your buyers or, or challenge that you've heard from your buyers? Does anybody have any, any insight onto what you're commonly seeing? I don't have access. I know not everybody here is a listing agent. We've got to have somebody with a buyer. <laughs> the biggest challenge is finding the home to buy. Yeah. So there is a trick and I'll tell you, Gary Ubaldini, uh, if you can get into his mastermind class once a month, it is very, very valuable because he's giving us real time data. And one of the ideas that Dana is, is using now is going, looking at pending properties, right? Because of these appraisals, things are falling apart quite often with buyers and financing. So maybe there's only so many on the open market, but if you can find, you know, there's an area your buyer wants to be, check out those pending listings, contact the listing agent and let them know, I have a buyer who's interested if anything falls apart. As a listing agent, we're getting many offers, what I do on every single one is contact them, thank them for the offer, let them know we're in a multiple offer situation. When I choose the offer, I contact every single realtor and say, the ones that didn't win, you didn't win this, but would you like to sit in a backup position? So it's just a simple question, but what's happening is listing agents aren't doing that. So now the deal's falling apart, all their buyers are gone, we can kind of swoop in there and grab it if we've contacted the listing agent. So that's an option to get some properties that aren't available. Off market, you know, FISBOs and expires, FISBOs kind of, but expires really aren't available anymore. So it's a little trick. Yeah, following up um, on those pendings or just ones that I, you know, my buyers didn't win on just saying, hey, you know, they're really very interested in this. If something happens, please let me know. Like we would be, you know, happy to put in another offer. And I've had multiple agents come back to me and say, you know, definitely we'll get back to you. Our inspection is up in five days or whatever. And so they're, they're definitely looking at it. Like this is possibly going to fall through. I feel like a lot of, um, listing agents are, are not a hundred percent sure, you know, even when you do get a contract, there's so many things right now that can happen. And so just being 
someone that's able to follow up with them is definitely going to be um, a key thing to help getting your buyers into a house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the home swap program, the video, if you go to knock um, and research their home swap video, someone had asked that question, you can do the training online, sign up for it. It's really quick and they'll go through it with you. They are a conventional lender. For me, I don't think that that's really going to benefit our buyers, but the home swap program does. And Brandon, you're right with false information. It's happening constantly. But that, that first conversation, I think, sitting with the buyers, if you can do it face-to-face, -face, it's much more valuable, and educating them and teaching them. I had a buyer come down from Illinois. He's selling his house. A subcontractor of his is buying his house. But the subcontractor has to sell his house to buy my client's house. He came down to Florida thinking he was buying a house because he's selling his house. He's 90% packed up. He has no financing. He hasn't sold the house yet. And there's contingencies. So that was a lot of education that we had to go through and explain to him, no, this is not what's happening. So now he just last week got pre-approved through our lender. You know, he's set where he's set, whether he has to sell his house or not. Um, but I was shocked at the, the miseducation. Yeah, I, I think, I think especially house. with out of state buyers coming into Florida, it's super important on educating them of our area. Absolutely. And, you know, something that I learned the other day and, and I, you know, it, people might feel different about it, but I thought it was kind of genius is your first home does not need to be your dream home. And I think that can qualify for really any home, because if, if the buyer is in the position to start building equity and start building their financial independence, it's not going to be the most perfect dream home. Their first purchase might not even be their second, but it's a pathway to financial freedom because they're continually building equity. So if we can explain that to the buyers, if they agree, obviously it changes the mindset a little bit of finding this most perfect house. Um, that's true. And Brandon just said something really cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. The objection in this shift is separating the buyers who need to buy and the buyers that want to buy. And I think the education for those that that need to buy is, is super important. So I think one thing that we could do here while, while somebody else thinks of um, a challenge that they've overcome or how they how they overcame a, a challenge with the buyer, just a story for many of y'all. Uh, go ahead and start thinking about that. But what we can do is if you can just list off um, Kelly and Dana, just a couple of things, a couple of bullet points of the most necessary things to teach your buyers in that first consultation to kind of set them up for success and set those expectations. And I'll, I'll go ahead and record those in the chat. That way you all can, uh, can take those as well. Okay. Dana, you want to talk about that or you want to? Um, well, I would say first you, you know, you have to figure out who your buyer is to be able to educate them correctly, um, you know, depending on what their financing is or if they even know about financing. Um, I've definitely come across people that aren't even sure that they, or didn't realize that they needed a pre-approval um, to even put an offer in. So that's really one of the first things is you don't wanna go out and you're showing them a million homes thinking that they know this because a lot of the times they don't realize that they need that pre-approval to even have their offer looked at um, and letting them know that because you can't turn one in without it. Right. And when people look on websites and they say, oh, I put this much in for the house, I think I can afford this. You know, it doesn't, it's not always an easy calculation. Right. Yeah. And I would also say in that consultation, you really want to figure out what their their need is what is their yeah like like you were saying the want or need what do you really need in a house that we we can help narrow down their search because a lot of times when I first start talk to people we're looking all over you know I could be anywhere in Pinellas County or Hillsborough County and it's, it's quite a broad range um so <laughs> like our investor yeah anywhere yeah in so county area, just find me something good well, those are, yeah, those are a little different. They just, they'll look at anything, but, <laughs> but um, yeah, figuring out what their, their needs are for sure. And, mm -hmm. and that goes into timeline too, mm -hmm. you know, figuring out last minute, oh, I need to sell my house to buy a house. Well, that changes your timeline for sure. <laughs> right. You know, are they leasing? Do they need to break a lease to move in? You know, figuring out what their timeline is, 
is super important too, because, you know, houses are flying off the market and most of the time they're wanting to, yes, Pasco County too. <laughs> most of the time, um, you know, a seller is looking to close as soon as possible right now. And so knowing what your buyer's timeline is and if they're able to close in three weeks and we can put that in there, that would be, that's the best thing to do. So knowing what yeah. they can do and what their timeline is. And it also helps us because as we get buyers that come in, we prioritize them, right? We've had the discussion. So we know these people are looking to buy now. These mm -hmm. people are three to six months out. These people are six to nine months out. These people are nine to 12 months out. So how much energy we give them and how we touch them matters. Nobody wants to waste you know, any precious time on someone who's not ready. You yeah. can't force a buyer to be ready. Right. But we just learn. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I mean, definitely one of the most important things I've, I've come across with educating buyers right now is that appraisal gap and, or appraisal waiver altogether. If they're financing, um, having the ability to put that in a contract is definitely moving you to the front line to be able to compete with cash because I've talked to you know many listing agents right now I'm putting offers in with and most of the time the seller is just a little worried about the appraisal and you know how prices are going up every day and whether or not the appraisal can keep up with it and most of the time they can't right now and so they're going to look immediately at cash and ones that are either waiving appraisal or have a decent gap that they're willing to pay. Mm -hmm. And does everybody really know the difference between appraisal gaps and appraisal waivers? Is everybody using those right now? Um, you know, it, it, appraisal gaps are just kind of, I'll pay 10,000 over, I'll pay 5,000 over, I'll pay to a maximum. Appraisal waivers are saying you'll pay whatever the appraised value is, whether it appraises or not. So it's a big conversation to have with the lender Mm -hmm. to say, are these people qualified to waive appraisal because their credit score is high enough, they have enough money in the bank and the house is in a strong enough market, lenders will allow them to waive appraisal. If the buyer is waiving appraisal at their own choice because they have the cash to bring, that's a big difference. So if they're saying appraisal still needs to be done by the lender, lender still requires it, we're just going to pay the difference that's a big difference too. So the nuances of the appraisal gap and the appraisal waiver matter too. You want to make it look as strong as possible while not overextending your buyers. And that's just a really, that conversation has got to be not only with your buyer, but it has to be with their lender. Because yeah, I would, I would say also with that, there's been a lot of misconception I've seen with buyers and what their closing costs are going to be. Um, right. Because they're like, yeah, I, I, I've got cash to pay a gap, but that's going to be on top of the cash that you're bringing to closing for your closing costs and all of that. And your down payment. Yeah, down payment. Um, so that's not that's not included in that. That's on top of that. So making sure that they know that and mm -hmm. um, that they're they're able to do it. And so all these leaving them with nothing. Yeah, all these working pieces, we kind of know what's going to work with the buyer because of the conversations we've had at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. what, what options do they have? How much cash do they have? Do they have repair budget? Um, there's a lot of solutions out there right now. It's just kind of being creative. It's keeping a really positive attitude, just letting them know what to expect and just letting them know that you're there for them through this process. Mm -hmm. I think that's really made a difference. Yeah, that's that's another really big piece is keep in relationship with your buyers. Not not as much as uh, uh, Andy, our previous speaker, was in relationship <laughs> with their uh, with their <laughs> that's a little money <laughs> with their would be sellers. You don't want to you don't want to have a sleepover with your with, with your client, but um, it is good to maintain that relationship. Um, so I went ahead and put in the chat some of the main points of education, uh, the things that can really help out initially. Is there anything else anybody can think of that that they've been educating their buyers on? that has really helped out with, uh, with this whole process. I know we've got some of the best agents in the world here on this Zoom and, and there's gotta be something here. <laughs> Crickets certainly help. I mean, you guys did go over, go over quite a bit, but there's, there's gotta be some little, 
little nugget of information somebody can provide here. Yeah, because we're only doing it our way, right? I know there's realtors here that do it their way, and I'd love to hear some other ideas. And it's shifting, right? We all need to be ready for this shift. Inflation's going up, interest rates are going up. I don't know if I don't know about every every other county, but I know that in Pinellas County there were more new home permits pulled by March of this year than all of 2021. That means these new homes are going to be hitting the market in six to eight months. Sellers who think they're sitting on gold mines with a higher interest rate, things are shifting. So we need to be ready for that as well. Things might get a little buyer easier for our buyers if they can afford the right the rate hike. Uh, we just need more inventory. Yeah, that's true. Those those gold mines are turning into coal mines. Just um, something. This is just a something off. But I I don't know if people realize that if condos are not FHA approved, right? The complex has to be FHA approved. There are ways that lenders can individually approve a unit within that complex. So even though it's not an FHA complex, it's, it's a tricky one and you have to do it because of time now. You, if your clients want to be in a specific condo, talk to your lender and see if he can approve that FHA. That's just some, another trick that we've learned for buyers. Yeah. Talk to you and yeah, Lisa mentioned um, that they include a brief message from the buyer about why they want the house, those, those love letters. Um, uh-huh. I don't know if you guys have done that. Have you had any experience with those love letters on, on really on either side of the transaction? Well, I think that's a little iffy right now. A area. From yeah, what we're it's definitely a, a gray area on, I don't, I definitely don't advise to do it. I've come across people that want to do it on their own and have done it and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't because right now in the market the sellers you know most of the time just taking the highest and best term for them and it doesn't really come down to emotion so yeah the emotion of it but sometimes it does but we've been told by the market center just to be careful with Mm -hmm. love letters because of liability for realtors. So that's something you need to check with your market center and see what their, um, what their thoughts are on it. Yeah. I'll pass along anything I get from a buyer to myself. Yeah, I, I would I say I do the same. I'm, you know, I'll pass it along, but I'm not um, advising it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Always glad that that works, Joan. That's awesome. Hey, Andrew, I got a comment on that. So as a listing agent, um, we had, uh, I had a listing one time where I had three love letters in a five offer multiple situation. And it was very clear that two out of those three used the exact same template that they found online. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that does not, a lack of authenticity does not a good love letter make. No. Oh, wow. No. Cool. Yeah. That. That's, yeah. that's interesting. I never thought that they would be using templates. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I didn't know there was. One, I guess but... it goes back to like the high school writing an essay days of <laughs> the, <laughs> the checking if it's pulled right from the internet. <laughs> yeah. Plagiarism, yeah. yeah. It worked then, it might work now. <laughs> I mean, I think whatever we can do, right, within our boundaries, and we have yeah. boundaries, but I think I'm, all, and I know Dana is as well, we're high service realtors we do whatever we can to help our clients whether they're sellers or buyers and sometimes it's just a a relationship that we've learned now what they need um sometimes it's over and above i think um also we kind of touched on it earlier but the relationship with the if you can with the listing agent as well you know calling them every time you're putting in an offer and, and seeing what, what can we do? What, what do they have to have? If, you know, if they're willing to, to have a conversation with you, um, it definitely is helpful. Dana makes a really good point there. Cause I was involved with one recently where we're buying a, a house that's on a really nice lot, but the house needs some pretty substantial updates. And, um, I would, I suggested to a listing agent that, you know, they might want to pick our offer because they have the money to make it into something really special. And listing agent, thank God, told me, 
um, they've lived in this house for all these years and the place is absolutely perfect. And that 26 year old carpet has still got a lot of life in it. And you shouldn't <laughs> worry about that orange paint and do not suggest that your people are going to come in there and uh, make that Taj Mahal is. out of it because it's already perfect. Yeah. So luckily yeah. you didn't send that over. No, yeah, no, is- definitely. Being able to, to learn those things helps for sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. And having, you know, the, the listing agent knows who you are because if they're getting, I had someone that texted me, an agent text me back today that, oh, well, you know, showings are done after two days. We have 53 offers that we're going over. You know, if you're someone that's been communicating with the agent the whole time, the listing agent, and they, they know your name, it's going to help you stand out versus they have no idea looking at, I mean, obviously terms are very important as well, but you know, if you're having great communication with them, that can always help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Catherine, we kind of just lump them together, right? I mean, we're not following a a, a specific plan as far as pre-qualification and then the buyer's consultation. We're just making sure when we're having that first conversation not just the meet and greet, like, oh, I want to buy. When we have the first meeting with our client, everything is going into it, letting them know, finding out where they're coming from, finding out where they want to be, how they think they're going to get there, uh, what what hiccups they might already know about that's going to be in the way. Um, You know, that's what we, we just make sure that we get all of that information up front. And it saves all of us time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it, that initial consultation is so important. It helps, it helps save our time and their time and, you know, really able to get started immediately instead of finding out these things, you know, week by week as we go. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And, and one thing that, that can help out your clients a lot, and I know it's, it's always good to tie these conversations back into command because that's what the state's about. Um, if you look on your KW app or if your client looks on the KW app, there's a buyer's guide on there. There's a seller's guide on there. They can go through step by step and, and read a very detailed view of exactly of exactly what the steps are. Um, you can even customize that however you'd like to. And from within the opportunity, you can actually check off items for them so that they can use that as a roadmap as to exactly what to expect. Um, yeah, I've pointed that out to many of my first time home buyers um, because that's always on their mind. It's like, okay, what's next? Every every step of the way, what's next? So for them to be able to see the roadmap right away, it um, you know helps them know what's coming and not to be surprised by it. Yeah, absolutely. And are there are there any questions or does or we'll we'll go ahead and just pause for any any ahas. Does anybody have any ahas? Did you learn any new information today that's that's going to help you with uh, with getting your buyers into their homes uh, to making your clients happy. It's got to be one. I know not everybody here is perfect. (laughs) I have a question, Andrew. Um, And I came in a little late. I apologize. But I have worked with two buyers and they did successfully close. And we try to restrict to five to eight homes that we actually show them. And that's not enough. So when do you say is enough is enough? And that's the reason I brought up the question on the reconsultation. Maybe it's time like, you know, hey, I've showed you five to eight and these fit all your parameters. You're not happy. You're not putting in an offer. We, you know, when, what was, what did that, does that conversation look like? How would you handle that buyer? They're ready. They're able, they're willing, but from the five to eight that you've shown them, they just can't make a decision. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know if five to eight is enough. I guess that's um, where you are or your market or maybe what, what you like. I don't know if that's realistic anymore. I mean, we'll show five in a day. So for somebody to make the biggest purchase they'll probably ever make, even if it's 250,000, it's a really big decision. So we don't limit the amount of houses, but we aren't going to continue showing property to buyers that aren't serious. And it's kind of talking along as we go, Catherine, and saying, okay, so we have a specific set of buyers right now. They were VA, (laughs) switched them to FHA because we couldn't get them anything through FHA. We've shown 
Specifically, they're looking for condos. So that's condos. why. We've shown them multiple condos, things that are fitting their criteria, and there's always something wrong with it, right? So we mm -hmm. get paid when things close. We offer our services freely until the deal closes, but we have to protect our time and our bottom dollar. So Catherine, I would say if you're getting to the point where you feel like they not, might not be serious enough, you might want to have another discussion and say, okay, listen, I've shown you, you wanted this, this, and this, this, and this in a, in a dream home. These properties have had this, They've, they're located in the neighbor, neighborhood that you want. What's missing? What are we not getting right here? we don't want to waste your time. And we don't, you know, we want to make sure that we're getting you a house before interest rates go up even more. So what do we do here? And I think it's just kind of that come to Jesus moment. You know, you have that talk with him and go, hold on a second here. What are we doing? Yeah. I, I definitely have those conversations. If I'm, you know, showing every, every other day and we're, we're not getting anywhere with it. It's like, okay, did, did something change? Cause a lot of times something did change. They just, didn't tell you, um, like maybe their timeline changed or something happened that changed their timeline. So kind of just regrouping and getting back to what their need is. And if maybe something's changed from that original consultation. Uh -huh. And educating buyers on how we work, right? I don't know if everybody realizes that we get paid nothing until the deal closes. So if we've got someone out there wanting to see 50 homes because they like hanging out with us or they look like looking at houses, <laughs> they're pre-approved, but at some point we have to, you know. Yeah, that's definitely a, I feel like a hard, hard line to kind of, you it know, educate hard. them because they definitely, the more that I do it, the more I realize that people think that we're getting paid a lot more than we are. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of a mutual respect thing. Very true. So I'm going to go ahead and drop cost our, of uh, waiting. I want that. You mean is the cost of waiting, Ryan, for interest rates, or what do you mean? Just the normal cost that comes with uh, waiting on purchasing a home. That'd be nice to have a spreadsheet if anybody has one. I would love to have that. Well, and also adding if they're <laughs> renting, you know, adding in their rental payments and all of that every month. Uh -huh. Yeah, we'll have to have the MCTTs work on putting that together. So if anybody wants to help us, feel free to do it. We'll maybe put that together. And once we get it to get together, We'll put it along with this video on our original website. Perfect. And I, I went ahead and dropped in that little info sheet of, of just some of the some of the important points um, that that Kelly and Dana brought up here um, on educating your buyers, overcoming objections. And I'm also going to drop in into the chat just the uh, those quick four things for buyer education that just the things you really want to go over for sure. Um, so there's that there and. We're going to make sure those are attached to this recording as well on our website. So if you didn't download it, you want to get it later. When I post this on our website, I'll put a little direct download link right below it. So you can take that. We're going to try and do that for every one of our calls going forward. Okay. Thank you. Brian has one. That's wonderful. Oh, heck yeah. 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 Brian, good old Brian. And um, do we have any other questions, any ahas? Did anybody, you know, Get some good information to help your clients that maybe you hadn't heard before or, or heard in a different way. I know we got one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think we're good. All right. So yeah, it was it was a really high level conversation, which which is great. And I know a lot of you are are uh, are really seasoned agents. Um, I'll go ahead and drop Kelly and Dana's contact information into the chat. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to them. Mary feel Homeport. free to reach out. Yeah. Very good. And, and yeah, so we'd like to thank Kelly and Dana for coming on They're They're the buyer Queens and seller Queens. They're, they're uh, they're just awesome. So happy Tuesday, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thanks for having us. Yes, Thanks absolutely. You, you did a great yeah. job. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Yeah, We're going to have Amanda anymore. Bishop coming up next right after uh, we take a short break. So stay tuned for Amanda Bishop and um, you're in for a treat with her. She's pretty amazing herself, especially since uh, she's married to one of our MCTTs. So we're very lucky there. Um, thank you guys very much again. Andrew, thank you for taking time out of your vacation to join us. That's pretty special. Thank you. You're, 
you're a special human being, but I know you know that. It's it's so early here, like <laughs> there's nothing. I can, so <laughs> the time <laughs> you you're adapting to their time already. I think it's time for you to come back. Oh. It's time to come home. <laughs> uh, yep, I'm actually coming back. So thank you guys so much, Kelly and Dana. Thanks, hey, travel. So All right. Bye everybody. Thanks. See you guys.